Team Fortress 2 is now well over a decade old and despite this, it is still going unbelievably strong. In that time frame, we've had quite a few cult classics. From some minor league, rather pathetic attempts at video games like the first Modern Warfare game in 2007, to a few popular indie titles in the coming years. However, none of that matters as in 2016, Team Fortress 2, but purely funded by porn addicts who can't seem to understand that they can in fact play any other better game was released. And in the fall of last year, we finally received Overwatch, but with a 2 slapped onto its name, with none of the content they promised. A somehow infinitely worse version of Overwatch 1. A game so egregiously shit that Blizzard is paying people to quit it. A sequel that solely exists as a means of implementing totally not pay to win battle pass systems, via locking heroes to tier 1 of a premium pass or tier 40 of the free pass. And a microtransaction system which had me and the entire r slash rule 30 34 fan base somehow <laughs> pleading for loot boxes to make a return. Oh, how far we have fallen since Team Fortress 2's initial release. But how exactly has TF2 been doing all these years? Well, it has outlasted both Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 PvE content. Not only that, but in a single update, Valve has added more real content to Team Fortress 2 than Overwatch 2 has received since launch. No, I'm not joking. What Valve classified as a minor update for TF2 just added more maps than Overwatch 2 has received since launch. Not by a small amount either. They added 14 new maps. Meanwhile, Overwatch 2 has announced basically all of the content that justified the entirety of its existence is cancelled, and replaced by the awful quote-unquote story missions they pretty much already had in the original Overwatch. And they're going to charge you money for them. 15 whole buckaroos. <laughs> Whilst Team Fortress 2's PvE, aka Man vs Machine, has existed for longer than Overwatch as an entire franchise, with essentially all of the features Blizzard promised. The only thing that costs money with Man vs Machine is the tickets. Those are purely used to obtain extra rewards from it, and they're pretty damn good as well. So instead of being forced to hand over a lump sum of cash over to Valve, you get to experience the entire mode for free and still obtain free cosmetics slash weapons during your time with it. It, increasing its player base and avoiding segmenting the player base, something the games industry as a whole figured out wasn't a good idea when they made the move from season passes to battle passes. Apparently, the Blizzard suits were only able to comprehend a third of the point of implementing a battle pass system. The only part which got processed by good old Bobby was how it could be used to scam their player base into believing Overwatch 2 was a real game and not just a microtransactions update, with practically none of the features or content they advertised the product around. Even if you ignore everything I previously laid out, Team Fortress 2 is objectively the better game. After all, I got noticed in it. <laughs> To further put into perspective as to why Man vs Machine is so cool, it's where Reinhardt's shield mechanic was stolen from. You would not be surprised as to how many things Blizzard blatantly stole from this game. There are simply too many coincidences. Hell, even Team Fortress 2's battle passes, which are the first known implementation of them, are infinitely better than the horseshit Overwatch offers, allowing you to unlock plenty of new weapons and cosmetics for Pyro, all for the whopping price of nothing, or for the incredibly steep price of £1.99. You can get access to a shit tons of new cosmetics for all of the 9 characters with no FOMO bullshit that forces you to complete them in a 3 month long season. And if you don't want to pay for anything, don't worry, you will consistently receive cosmetic items and weapons drop into your inventory whenever you're playing, and it doesn't even require months upon months of grinding like it does in Overwatch. As admittedly depressing as it is to be a Team Fortress 2 player thanks to his rampant bot issues, it's blatantly worse to be a Rule 34 fan right now. With the summer update to Team, it also managed to hit an all-time concurrent player count of over a quarter of a million users. And I shouldn't be able to say this, but I'm honestly having doubts about Overwatch 2 achieving the same player count when it comes to Steam next month. You wanna know why that is? It's because it's a good game. Unlike that bitch, the reason why Team Fortress 2 is so goddamn brilliant is because it's just a basic bitch. This game is unbelievably simple and a hero shooter does not need to be anything more than that, as every single other video game since its launch has introduced often out of place mechanics such as grapple hooks, Team Fortress 2 has not attempted to be anything more than it needed to be. A basic bitch. Every single class is about as distinct and easily distinguishable
comfortable as it can possibly get. There are no overlaps. None. As Overwatch 2 believes its player base's finances dry with all the hentai artists they pay for content from, Team Fortress 2 has remained perfectly casual, with clear-cut, well-defined counters to each and every mercenary, with no room for confusion, but more than enough room for deep gameplay mechanics. Instead of having a character in the healer class who may as well not be a healer, as they towed a line between DPS and healer, cough cough Kariko, their classes have remained perfectly unique. Hero shooters by no means need a class to fit every porn category the mind could conjure up. It only needs a few main ones. Where Overwatch 2 is propped up and purely supported by its porn, Team Fortress 2's porn merely exists as a wonderful add-on, serving as an extra on top of its excellent dish of content and gameplay. A cherry on top, some might say. Not as the only reason it exists. Valve also added a motherfucking seal in the summer update. I mean, as much as I'm sure Blizzard hoped that my minority exploitation chart could compete with the likes of seals, Overwatch just can't compete with this cute little fucker. I just want to attack other people and I want to kill other people and I want to create conflict and um, I want to watch the world burn. And despite having 30 hours in the game already before returning to it, I had no idea how in-depth this game actually is. There's apparently an entire crafting system. You probably knew that existed. I sure as hell didn't. There's also a war painting system. You also probably knew that existed. I somehow didn't. As I'm sure you've heard a million times before, playing this game is very much a fever dream. Where else can you stumble upon a furry medic in your lobbies? Outside of the plethora of degenerate hentai games available on Steam. And I've got to say, this is one AAA game where I've played it and actually found the community to be genuinely phenomenal. More often than not, the only experience you can find in AAA communities is predominantly negative one, with indie titles serving as the main place for hilarious interactions between players that aren't just 2007 Modern Warfare-esque situations. It is quite strange how often I've performed a conga line with enemy players on the new summer update maps. The TF2 community, although undeniably insane and perfectly crazy, are flat out amazing. And those 14 maps Valve added are equally as amazing. The community content implemented in this update is of high enough quality to the point you'd have no clue they were actually community made up until someone told you they were. I'm sure if I hadn't mentioned it earlier in the video, you'd have no idea yourself either. I adored Overwatch when it initially released and it was pretty much the only game I played for about a year straight because it was all my friends played. But over time, that franchise has just gone downhill at a progressively more rapid rate. I have no faith in Blizzard as a development team anymore, and the only hope I have for the studio is that Microsoft gets them in line. It's fairly clear Activision Blizzard's shareholders and Bobby Kotick have been rapidly fucking over the development teams in order to make quick, easy cash off of the fans remaining, and we're already seeing some pretty insane pro-consumer moves when it comes to Blizzard from Microsoft recently, as the merger is pretty much guaranteed to go through at this point, and although I am doubtful much will change since Blizzard makes billions every year, I'm hoping enough can change that in the future Overwatch is an actually recommendable franchise to get into again. But right now, there is a clear and objectively better game for you, which offers quite literally everything Blizzard's executives utilize to scam their fans when it comes to Overwatch 2's launch and promises. With my disappointed ramblings about how much better a 16 year old game is compared to its cheap clone out of the way, we have finally come to the end of my Team Fortress 2 video, so please do not forget to do all the things us YouTubers adore begging you to do, aka check out the Twitter, Discord, as well as like, comment, and subscribe with bell notifications turned on, so that I will see you all in the next video.